Hi, and thank you for joining my channel. And today we're going to be going into a new subreddit that I have stumbled upon that I enjoyed. And I hope you enjoy it too. So today we're going to be checking out the subreddit Oh No Consequences, which um, I've taken to find out, you know, is very similar to like uh, face palm and uh, those type of subreddits. So if you've enjoyed those subreddits, you'll probably enjoy this one. So um, strap in and let's check it out. So this is a Facebook um, post. I saw this one and yeah, being a former teacher, I just, I had to include it. So this person writes, Has anyone unschooled a child who organically learned to read or write on their own, like a child who naturally teaches themselves how to stand and walk? And at what age did this happen, please? My child, who is Eight and a half, and I recently went to a homeschool event where a reading tutor expressed her disappointment that I missed the window, and now my child will struggle. I was under the impression that my child would naturally learn as her desire grew with, as with all things in this human life, but would love some anecdotes to support us in this unschooling journey. Thanks. Thank you. Now, as I just said, I was a teacher. I taught for 10 years. I have subbed for almost that long. So I've been in the public school system for quite some time. Um, and I was in the sixth and seventh grade for a good majority of that. I've also subbed in high school. Um, so, Please just take it from me when I tell you that parents need to be involved in their children's education. Please do not put all the onus or responsibility, if you do not understand what that word means, on your child's teacher to teach them how to read or write or anything for that matter because ultimately it comes down to you and your child but ultimately you the amount of times that i had children in my seventh grade classroom who were actually on grade level learning meaning that they could read seventh grade material and understand what they were reading, I can count on two hands. And remember, I have been in the public education system for almost 20 years. Think about that for a second. Most of my children were reading well below grade level. And I'm not even talking about children who were EC or English language learners. I'm talking about students who have been in the educational system since the day they turned five and started in kindergarten. And the amount of my kids who had joined sixth or seventh grade and were still on a somewhere between kindergarten and fourth grade level of reading was astronomical. It was wild. And I was expected to try to get them on grade level by the end of the year. Not happening. Because I agree with this reading teacher. 
if a child has not learned to read or write by the time they're at least in first grade, possibly second at the bare minimum, it's probably not going to happen. They've got to be they've got to be motivated themselves. They've also have to have a lot of support from their parents and teachers. We have to come hand in hand. I'm sorry I got off on a rant, but this really bothers me. So there's there's my soapbox probably for this video. I'm sorry. All right. Uh, so our first post here, student blaming me for not getting accepted into the gifted program. And now I'm cackling. So for any of you that don't understand what the gifted program means, now it may be called something different where you're from, or you might not have it at all from where you're from. I don't know where you're listening. But here in the States, um... And I would, I would assume it's in most of the states in the United States. We have what is called a gifted program for those kids who are consistently high achievers. Um, it might be called something different uh, depending on where they are. And it's mostly in the public school. Now, if they're in a private school, they may not have the gifted program. Um... So, yeah, it's for those kids who are really, 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 really high achievers, like, consistently all the time. Now, can they be kicked out of the gifted program? Absolutely. If they stop uh, performing at that really high level, then they can be kicked out of the gifted program. But they can also come back into it if they start performing at that really high level. Now, I'm talking, like, they have to have... I don't remember, I think it might be 95, 96 in every subject, consistently, all the time, and they don't, as far as I know, um, like test them for intelligence or anything, um, my son wasn't tested for intelligence, but he was in the gifted program, um, so yeah, so let's see what happened with this student. And this teacher does okay so this student does not hand in assignments I've had plenty of those does not talk in class and or participate in discussions have had plenty of those goes home early every day yep <laughs> asked to do assignments weeks or months past the due date uh, hands in subpar work when the assignments are submitted months late after begging to do them to fix a mark Will not participate in gym. Usually that's not a requirement, but I mean, I guess it depends on where you are. Won't work in groups. Puts headphones in the moment any confrontation is happening between him and someone else. Me and him, two totally random students. When sent to the office repeatedly, leaves the school so no longer an option. Oh my gosh. Student then asked me to write a referral to be considered for the gifted program at the high school when he is attending. I'm going to have to say no. I had to try so hard to not laugh. His mom claims he was assessed as gifted as a toddler. Maybe, but yeah, I'd say he's definitely not acting like it now. I can't believe that at all. He's not once shown me he's anything more than average in any work he does. I filled it in. I didn't lie. I gave his average and his grades. <laughs> his average was probably like 20 or 30 at this point. Student doesn't get accepted. Shocking. Yeah, very shocking. I don't know how that happened. And is now blaming me going as far as to, men as to have numerous toddler like meltdowns and having to be sent home because he's inconsolable. This is supposed to be like an eighth grader and he's acting like a two-year-old because I ruined his whole life. Yeah, 
Yeah, sure. Yeah, you ruined his life. Not him. He didn't ruin his own life. He, You ruined his life. Yep. Mm -hmm. I forgot to add, I thought something was maybe going on in his home life earlier in the year and did talk to his previous teachers that were still in our building. Both said that he actually used to be worse. Oh, okay. But both also said that mom played the gifted card on them. There's no paperwork provided to the school that specifically said he's actually gifted in any way, but there does not seem to be any red flags of anything at home, just that they genuinely think he is gifted. I also forgot to add, when we go to gym, he has tried on numerous occasions to hide in a cupboard like a toddler again. That doesn't scream gifted. That screams like Maybe he's special in the, like, autistic way. I'm not trying to, I, I'm not qualified to make that decision. But, like, that, like, that doesn't, I don't know. All right. Crazy. Next story. Couple hired me as a photographer at their wedding, and I didn't show. Now they want to sue me. There's got to be something more to this because I'd want to see you too if you didn't show up to take pictures at my wedding. But there's got to be more to it. Hi. A couple on a community WhatsApp group chat were reaching out to hire a photography for, photographer for their wedding. I knew a friend of mine who used to be a photographer and she was okay lending me her camera for the event. So I reached out to the couple and let them know I could do it. They asked me if I had a portfolio, and I used to photograph college graduations part-time a few years ago, but no weddings. Due to this, they were really, and I mean really, shortchanging me. They offered me a total of $80, dang, to be a photographer at their wedding and reception, and cited that they were taking a risk by hiring me, but wanted to give me a chance. I was hesitant, but that money goes a long way for me, and I was down bad lately, so I accepted. Okay. They sent me a contract which had our names and locations of the event and other boiler point, boilerplate language, and I signed it. Well, okay, you signed the contract. So how's this? Hmm. The venue was really far away, like two and a half hours, but I had a friend who lived there, and he was currently visiting me. I was going to be going there anyway, so I was going to hitch a ride with him and stay at his place a few days before the wedding. Everything was going smooth until a few days before the wedding. They said that there was a storm and possible tornado forecast, and they can't have the wedding venue at that location anymore since it was outdoors, and they were going to move the wedding indoors to a church right next to my house. That was perfect since I now didn't need a ride to the other city. I let my friends know, my friend know, and a few days later we went, he went to the city by himself. Uh-oh. Three days before the wedding, the couple decided to move the wedding back to the city two and a half hours away since the forecast was looking better. I didn't even have a ride anymore since my friend left. I told the couple that it won't be possible for me and they ignored me for three days. I assumed they probably decided to go with someone else. Yeah, it's not good that they ignored you. Literally on the day of the wedding, the husband is blasting my text, asking me where I am and that I'm missing important moments from the wedding. I show him the text that I sent, and he said he didn't read it. Uh... Because he was busy with the wedding. He asked me to call an Uber, but those were insanely expensive. And I'd asked, I'd actually be at a huge loss taking an Uber. He said he was not going to pay for it since it was my job. <laughs> okay. I couldn't do anything else. I asked if he knew someone still in town I could hitch a ride with. And he said no. Then he started sending rude texts and saying some crazy and also racist stuff. I block him and turn off my phone. When I turn it back on, I find that I was apparently the only photographer 
at the wedding and they didn't have anyone else. They now want to sue me for contract breach and emotional damage. Good luck getting that emotional damage. I can't afford a lawyer and I called five people in my area and all of them are asking for 300 to 500 per hour to look over my contract. Oh. The couple are also posting my profile picture all over Facebook and tagging me and saying I ruined their wedding. And their friends are also commenting mean things. I'm not sure what to do at this point. Please, any advice would be greatly appreciated. Ew, I don't know. I don't know. These are the consequences of your actions. Ooh. Ooh, yikes. But I would have to lawyer up and... You, I mean, you did breach the contract, but I mean, I can see why you did it. But I'm gonna... I'd have to say lawyer up and, and, and fight this. I mean, it's gonna cost you, but you may... You may get something back. I don't know. I, I don't know... All right. I think this may be our last one. I'm not 100% sure, but it might be. But it's titled Kid Breaks Stuff, and parents are surprised that they have to pay for it? What? We have to pay for stuff our kid breaks? Your kid breaks $150 worth of product. Don't be surprised when I charge you for it. My night job is at a specialty pet food and treat store. And we also offer grooming and a self-washing grooming station where you can come in and wash your pet. I had a couple come in with their human son, who was about, <laughs> love how you had to, had to point that out, who was about nine years old to wash their dog. The couple went in with the dog and left their son to wander around the store. Ooh, ooh, not, not good. Ooh, one of the, one of the couple should have stayed with the child. Ooh. Oh, I remember. Oh, no. No, not good. As I'm by myself, I didn't notice he was unsupervised until they'd already gone in and started washing their dog. Yeah. I spent 15 minutes fish finishing up my baking, taking care of the customers, and following this kid around to clean up after him. He was grabbing random toys and playing with them, then setting them down wherever, bouncing all the tennis balls, grabbing leashes off the shelf, and pretending they were lassos. He was also bothering my customers, asking them random questions as they tried to shop. After I asked him three times to stop messing with things and other people, he went over to our baked treats table. Oh no. I knocked on the self-wash door and asked the parents to please bring their son into the wash with them or to let him sit in the car while they finish. And they told me that they were almost done and that their son was never a problem. I explained that he was disturbing other customers and playing with random items that I was having to clean up. And the woman looked me right in the eyes and said, yeah, that's your job. It's not my job to watch your kid, though. I told her my job was to run the store and not babysit customers' children. And she rolled her eyes at me and said that they were almost done. I come back to the sales floor and the kid had crumbled three cakes and a, whole, and a whole bunch of desserts as well as snapped a bunch of bully sticks and other dried treats. He smiles and bounces off and I start to gather and ring up the items. The parents come out of the self-wash and I add that to their transaction and tell them their total is $149.76. Both of their mouths drop open and the guy says, $150 to wash my dog? I say, no, sir. The self-wash was 16. The rest is to cover what your son destroyed. The mom said her son didn't destroy anything and I gestured to the pile of broken cakes and treats. Actually, ma'am, he did. He broke all of this after I asked you to please supervise him. She started arguing and saying that I must have broke them all because I didn't like having her son in the store. Yes, because I love baking a bunch of stuff and just a bunch of stuff just to destroy it. Uh-huh. Yep. You got me. I had a feeling this was going to be the reaction, so I already had the video from our cameras ready to go on my phone to show her. 
this isn't your son walking over to our table and smashing those cakes and street and treats. This isn't your son going to bully the bully bar and snapping them in half. She didn't say anything for a second and then told me she didn't think they should have to pay for them. I told her that her child broke them after I asked them to watch him or let him sit in the car so it was their responsibility to cover our losses. She asked to speak to the manager and was very disappointed when I pointed to my name tag that has manager under my name. You are speaking to the manager, ma'am. Anything else I can help you with today? If not, your total is $149.76. She glared at me and put her card in and paid. And then they left, looking like they were screaming at the kid the whole way to the car. Anyone else have any fun work stories like this? Oh my gosh. Uh, no, you cannot leave little kids like that alone in a store. There's no telling what they could get into. That is wild. Okay. We do have another story. Customer pays extra for being a Karen. Has anyone ever encountered a Karen? I encountered a Darren once. Now, I didn't actually have to deal with him. I was just kind of there around the the chaos but i hope i never have to deal with that again because it was a little wild so i regularly go regularly go to the hair salon to get my extensions done the staff is super friendly and are always doing a great job they have a five-star google rating and have been regularly awarded as top salon in a city of 3.6 million you get the idea they're, they objectively provide great service. A couple of year, weeks ago, I was at the salon getting, once again, getting my extensions filled. My hairdresser, a super lovely woman, told me that she's in a bit of a bad mood since a customer did not show up for her appointment earlier that day without canceling. Doing extensions can take a quite a bit of time, and that's a lot of money lost for the salon. She also told me that the customer is a bit difficult at times. I understand how much of an understatement that was when said customer actually showed up apparently four hours late and demanded to be served. The owner of the salon told her that they didn't really have the capacity to do her hair since the slots for the rest of the day are booked. Karen then started aggressively rambling about bad customer service and how they should show some flexibility. I was just sitting in my chair rolling my eyes so hard that they nearly fell out of my head. After five minutes of discussion, the owner of the salon agreed to do her hair himself. Karen seemed to be satisfied by the VIP treatment. She sat down in the chair next to me and proceeded to start going off about how the last time they did her hair wrong, how the quality of the hair was trash. The color was off, it wasn't, and so on. She went on and on and on for a full hour. It was exhausting, to say the least. The salon owner just kept smiling and doing the work while taking the verbal abuse. I kept thinking, why? Why do you let her treat you this way? After a while, Karen decided that she needed to take a smoking break and went outside for a bit. So I asked the salon, salon owner, who I've known for three years by now, I was like, dude, why the heck do you not just throw her out? He just kept grinning at me and says, oh, it's fine. I regularly charge her two times the actual rate for the hair and service. I call it the giving me heck checks. We had a good laugh and I was just happy that Karen suffers consequences for her Karenness without even realizing it. It was very satisfying. <sighs> so that was our last story. And I think that was a good one. Karen gets definitely good karma for the way that she's acting. Now, if you liked that video, please let me know. Because I found that um, Reddit, that, uh, that, uh, 
um, oh no consequences pretty satisfying and if you like my channel please consider subscribing um and i hope you uh join me uh, for the next one and uh i'll see you the next time bye